Hi, in today's video I would like to talk to you about gears. Now, I have quite a lot of material I wish to cover, so this will be a multi-part series. In today's part, I would like to show you how you can design a basic involute spur gear, and I want to focus especially on some of the techniques that you can use to attach 3D printed gears to your shafts. The current plan is that in the next part I will talk about the uh, parameters and the numbers related to gears. Uh, for example, what is a pitch diameter, what is a diametral pitch, what is a module, and what number should I select for the various parameters for the gears that I need for my application. In another video I want to talk about how you can model these helical and herringbone gears and what are the advantages and disadvantages of these gears compared to regular spur gears. And then finally I wish to discuss how you can design racks, including helical racks, and ring gears, including helical ring gears. So with that, let's hop into Fusion 360 and let's get to designing this gear. I've now opened up Fusion 360 and the first thing I will do is make the basic spur gear shape. And to do that we'll go to tools and under add-ins here you go to scripts and add-ins and then this dialog pops up with a bunch of scripts that are already installed. And if you scroll all the way down you will find two instances of the spur gear script. As far as I know it does not matter which one you pick so you can just click run. And then this dialog comes up which asks for a bunch of parameters uh, for your gear. Um, I will explain what all these parameters mean in a later video. For now I will just pick a few parameters that will make sense later. For the module I will go for two and a half uh, and I will design a metric gear with a pressure angle of 20 degrees. Number of teeth 20, backlash I will leave at zero for now. A root fillet radius of a half millimeter. I want my gear to be 20 millimeters thick and I prefer to make the hole myself later on. You will see why that is at that time. Uh, so I will put the hole diameter to zero uh, so that no hole is generated. And at the bottom now you can see that it gives a pitch diameter of 50 millimeters. This number and this name will become important in the next video so keep that in mind. Uh, with all this entered you can press OK. And then we get a new component and this component is now our spur gear. What I'd like to do now is design the mounting hub for this gear. And to do that I will first activate the new component that we just got and then I will go to solid, create sketch and then click on the top surface of this gear. I then hit C on the keyboard for circle and then from the origin I drag out a circle and let's say we make it 30 millimeters. But I am going to 3D print this gear and I want this mounting hub to be as strong as it can be. So instead of giving it a fixed dimension, I will just delete this. What I will do instead is select this inner little edge right here on the inside of the gear teeth and hitting control, I also select the circle that we just made. And to those two edges, I apply the equals constraint. And this now makes the mounting hub as large as it can be without interfering with the gear teeth. So I finish sketch, I hit E for extrude, and then I will extrude this 20 millimeters upward. Next, I would like to make the hole for the shaft to go into. For that, I will create a sketch on the top surface of the mounting hub hit C for circle and then from the origin I draw a circle of 8.2 millimeters. In my case I want to mount this gear on a motor and that motor has a shaft diameter of 8 millimeters. I also know that my printer tends to print holes that are slightly smaller than they need to be and so to compensate for this I make the hole just a little bit larger in Fusion 360. Hit enter on this, finish the sketch then hit E for extrude and then you could extrude this downwards to the exact length that you need for the shaft length of your motor but you can also go the lazy way and just extend it all the way and then press OK and now we have a hole for our gear. 
The next thing I would like to do is make a cavity for a nut to go into. So I create another sketch on the top surface of the mounting hub. And then I hit R for rectangle. I drag that out. And then I hit D for dimension. And I will give this a dimension of 5 millimeters plus a little bit of play. And 10 millimeters plus a little bit of play. And these are the height and the distance between flats of an M6 nut. Next, I hit X for construction geometry and L for line. And from the origin, I will drag out a horizontal line with a distance of 5 millimeters. And finally, what I'll do is I will select this line of this rectangle and I will select this point holding down control. And then to those two objects, I apply the midpoint constraint. And then I can finish the sketch. I now hit E for extrude. And I drag down this profile by 10 millimeters. Um, if you want to make it a lit little bit more parametric, what you could also do is construct a midplane between the top of the mounting hub and the start of the gear teeth, and then extrude up to that midplane. I'll leave that up to you. The next thing I want to do is create a hole for the set screw to go into. So I will now select this surface right here, create a new sketch. I hit C for circle, and then I will drag my cursor along this line until we see this little equilateral triangle appear. Uh, this is an automatic midpoint constraint, which I do want here. So I click and I drag that out and I type in 6.2 millimeters. That is more than enough to fit an M6 set screw. Uh, finish the sketch, hit E for extrude and click both of these profiles. Um, and I want to extrude this in two directions. So under direction, I go for two sides. And then on the one side, I simply want to extrude it all the way. And on the other side, I want to extrude it five millimeters, which is exactly the same as the five millimeters that we had on the length of the construction line before. Uh, this extrudes it to exactly the center of the shaft hole. What you can also do, again, if you want to be a little bit more parametric, is instead of a fixed distance, you extrude to an object and then you extrude to this plane here and then click OK. And then we have a hole for our set screw to go into. The final thing that we will need is uh, a little bit of a pocket for the nut to go into. And for that, I again click this surface over here, create a new sketch. And what I will do now is under create polygon, take a circumscribed polygon. And then you want to look around here until you get this uh, concentric constraint on the circle that we made before. Uh, so I click and just drag this out. Um, the dimension that you get here doesn't matter, but you must here have a six sided polygon. You must have a hexagon for a nut. Uh, so I just uh, enter that. And what I will do now is remove this dimension that I do not want. Um, I will select this point here in the corner and I will select this edge over here and I will give that a midpoint constraint. And then I finish the sketch. I hit E for extrude. I select this uh, profile right here. I drag that out in this direction. And then I want to take as an extent to an object, which is going to be this surface over here. And so that makes the bottom of the cavity hexagonal and with the exact same dimensions otherwise uh, as the pocket that we already created. Uh, so click OK. And then we have all the features we need. We have a hole for our shaft. We have a hole for our set screw to go into. And we have a cavity for the nut that will accept the set screw. One final thing that I'd like to show you is how you can export this gear as an STL so you can 3D print it. There are two ways to do this, but one way is pretty terrible. The terrible way is to first save your gear. So uh, let's call it video gear. 
And then once it is saved, you can go to File, Export. And then if you scroll down a little bit on the file type, you can export it as an STL. And then you get this cloud translation, which may take a few minutes and all that good stuff. Uh, so we export it and then we have to wait for this to finish. This is the terrible way. The better way to do it is to simply go under Tools, under Make, and then 3D Print. And then in this dialog, I prefer not to send it through to a 3D print utility. Uh, the reason for that is every time you do that, a new instance of Cura is opened, and that leads to a lot of instances of Cura at some point. Um, and then I select the component I wish to 3D print. You can also select bodies if you prefer. And then I hit OK. And then I can just save this. Uh, the file name is already set to the name of the component. Um, I can save it and then it's immediately done. And if we go to our job status, uh, we see that this exporting via cloud translation is still going. I have now opened the gear in Cura and there are two things here that I wish to show you. First, with the orientation of the gear like this, with the mounting hub on top and the teeth at the bottom, I can ensure that this entire gear can be printed well without the requirement for any support. Second, I have chosen to use four perimeters here. And what this allows us to do in the case of this gear with these size teeth is that the gear teeth consist nearly entirely of perimeters. And this gives a maximum amount of strength to the gear teeth. If you have larger gear teeth, meaning that the module of your gear is larger, you may need to increase the wall line count, or alternatively, you have to print with fatter lines. So the line width has to go up, and possibly your nozzle diameter has to go up as well. I would now like to show you how you can put this gear on a shaft. So we take the gear, and we take care to align the whole of the set screw with the flat part of the D-shaft. And with that alignment ensured, we push the gear over the shaft. And then we take an Allen wrench and a set screw, like this. And then we simply drive the set screw into the hole. And with that, if we turn the gear, we notice that the motor also spins, so the gear is now rigidly attached to the shaft. I would now like to show you how you can design basically the same gear, but without a mounting hub, which makes it a little bit more compact. So I make a new design, and then I go back into the gear generator. And then I add the same parameters that I used before. So a module of 2.5, 20 teeth a half, 20, and zero. And there we have the same gear as before. I activate this component and I create a sketch on the top surface. And then I create the same circle as I did before of 8.2 millimeters to go over the shaft. Finish the sketch, hit E for extrude, and then extrude this all the way down again. Again, because I'm lazy, I don't want to match it to the shaft length of the motor. And then uh, we get to a little bit of a different part. So again, we create a sketch on the top surface. And what I want to do is create the pocket now for the nut to go into. Um, so I hit X for construction geometry and L for line. And I drag out a horizontal line here. The length doesn't matter. Then I create a second line from the origin. And I want to give that a length of five millimeters. And then I want to specify the angle between this horizontal line and this new line that I drew here. So I select them both and press D. And then the angle that I want here is 360 divided by the number of teeth and that entire thing divided by two. And the reason I select this particular angle and the reason I'm doing this in the first place is because I want the hole for the set screw to end up where the gear teeth are not. So I want it to land right in the middle of this section here 
so that it affects minimally the strength of the gear teeth. So now I create a rectangle, but if I create a rectangle the normal way, then I get these automatic horizontal and vertical constraints. So that doesn't work. So Ctrl Z to get rid of it. And what I'll do instead is just draw four lines. And what I'll do now is add the perpendicular constraint three times to three pairs of lines. And then I give it the dimensions as before. So this will be 10.2 and this will be 5.2. And then as before again, this line has to be on the midpoint of this point. So select them both and then midpoint constraint. And then the final thing that we need to do is select this angled line here and the top end of this cavity that we're about to make and make those parallel. Then we can finish the sketch and then the same as before, extrude it downwards by 10 millimeters. From here, everything is basically the same as before. So we create a new sketch on this inner surface here. I hit C for circle and I look for this midpoint constraint. I make it 6.2 millimeters. Finish the sketch, E for extrude. Um, again, two sides. And on the one side, I will go for all. And on the other side, I will go for five millimeters. And now the point of what we've been doing so far, if I just click OK, is that most of the hole that we've made for the set screw does not dig into the teeth of the gear. And if you did it the other way, then the uh, hole for the set screw would dig right through this tooth over here. And that tooth would then become quite weak compared to the other ones and would be prone to breaking. Um, so the final thing, as before, create a sketch here. We create a polygon, a circumscribed polygon. Again, look for this concentric constraint. Make sure it is a six-sided polygon. And then take this corner point here, this line here, give it a midpoint constraint, E for extrude. And then this profile, you go up to this face, cut it out. And then we have basically the same idea, but this gear is much more compact than the previous one. One thing that I neglected to show you before is how you can insert the nut into the pocket. Now, if the fit is quite loose, as in this case, then it'll simply drop in. But you honestly want the fit to be a little bit tighter than this. If the fit is a little tighter, what you can do is put the nut inside a pair of combination pliers. If you have a pair of parallel pliers, that would be better. And then leave a little bit of the flats sticking out of the jaw. You can then keep the nut upright as you insert it into the hole. Finally, if you need to drive the nut home to the bottom of the pocket, what you can do is grab a screwdriver and just tap it home with a hammer. And then that way, you can ensure that the nut goes all the way to the bottom of the pocket. You will damage your screwdriver a little bit, but this is a two euro screwdriver, so see if I care. This method of attaching the gear to the shaft using only a single set screw does suffer from two downsides. First is that there is a lot of force on the nut and that force is transmitted into the plastic. And because the surface area of the nut is rather small, this creates a very large amount of stress in the material, in the plastic. And as I have shown in my previous video, PLA especially is susceptible to a phenomenon called creep. And this will cause the set screw to come undone over time. Another problem is because we have only one set screw and we are only pushing into the gear from one side, we induce a slight asymmetry. I have hooked up the motor now to a power supply and I will turn on the power supply and you can notice that the gear will wobble, it will not run true. Let's now modify the design of this gear to address the problems I have brought up. 
First, I will add a cavity for a washer to reduce the stress in the plastic and thereby reduce the creep that the plastic will experience. So I will create a new sketch and then put that on this face over here. Hit C for circle and then look for this concentric constraint and then I will give that 20.2 millimeters. This is for 20 millimeter washers and then I give it a little bit of extra space to ensure that I can push them in later. Finish the sketch, hit E for extrude. I will select both of the profiles and then I will drag that out by one and a half millimeters. Uh, this is a little bit more than the thickness of my washers. The next thing I will do is create a sketch on the top surface of the gear and then I will hit P for project and I will project that circular cavity I just made into my sketch. And then on the view cube I hit top so I can get back into the correct view. I hit L for line and I co connect these two lines over here so that I can get a complete profile. I finish the sketch, I hit E for extrude and I select these two profiles over here and I drag them down and I will drag them to an object and that object will be this circle over here and then click OK and now I have a nice cavity for the washer to go into. The final thing I wish to do is mirror all of these features to the other side of the hole to balance out the forces and to prevent the concentricity error I talked about before. To do that, I will go to Create, Mirror, and then the pattern type will be Features, and the feature I want to mirror is both the washer features, and this pocket feature, and the hole, and also this feature over here, and then the mirror plane will be this plane over here. And so now everything is being mirrored to the other side, I click OK and then I do indeed get everything twice. I have two cavities for nuts, I have two cavities for the washers, and now if I look at it from this angle, I have one hole going straight through the gear. Uh, so now I can add two set screws uh, to balance out the forces that this gear will experience and thereby prevent the concentricity error. I have now mounted this new design to the motor. As you can see, if I give this a half turn, you can see the set screw on either side. And I will now turn on the power supply to show you the concentricity error. So to my eye, the concentricity does seem to be improved, but as you can clearly see, it is still not perfect. And I think the reason for this is that the X gantry of my 3D printer, which is a CR20, is sagging slightly because the lead screw to support it is on only one side of the machine. The other side is essentially free floating and so that side sags down ever so slightly, which causes the axes to no longer be perfectly perpendicular. In particular, this means that the shaft hole that we drill here, or that we print rather, is not completely perpendicular to the faces. I would now like to show you a different way of attaching a gear to a shaft. This gear has a hole all the way through the mounting hub, and on the other side we find a nut, which will accept this screw. And what we'll do now is put this shaft through the gear, and then we have to line up the hole in the shaft with the hole in the gear. Now this is a little bit tricky to find, but if you cannot find it directly you can use the pliers to give yourself a little bit more leverage. And once it's lined up you can insert the screw and push it to the other side. And then once it engages with the nut on the other side you can use an allen wrench to tie the screw into the nut. And then we have our finished result. The benefit of using this technique is that you can transfer an enormous amount of torque through this system. Uh, there is no way for this mechanism to come loose uh, due to a simple deformation. For this mechanism to fail, something has to break. Either the shaft 
or the screw or the gear itself has to break into pieces or otherwise this mechanism will stay intact. We're now back in Fusion 360 and I have already designed some features of the gear. So the teeth are already there, I've already made the mounting hub and I've already made the hole for the shaft. In this case the hole for the shaft is 10.2 millimeters because I want to mount this gear on a 10 millimeter shaft. What I'll do now is create sketch and hit one of these vertical planes. I hit P for project and I project this part into my sketch. I hit X for construction geometry and L for line. And I go from this midpoint here upwards to this midpoint over here. I want a line going straight up. Uh, I disable construction geometry and hit C for circle. And I look for the midpoint of the line that I just made. And I give that a diameter of 4.2 millimeters because I want to put an M4 screw through it later on. I finish the sketch, I hit E for extrude, I go to two sides, and then on both sides I will select the extent all. And then it bugs out, it unselects the profile, so just select it again, and then press OK. So now I have a hole through the mounting hub of my gear. I'd now like to add a small cavity for an M4 nut to seat into. To do that, I will first construct a tangent plane, and the plane will be tangent to the mounting hub. And for the reference plane, I will unhide the origin of the gear, and then I will select this plane. And this will ensure that the plane I am constructing is perpendicular to the hole. Then I create a sketch on this new plane, and as before, I hit P for project to project the gear into my sketch. And as before, I can't really select a, an automatic concentric constraint here. So again, I press X for construction geometry and L for line. And I draw a line like this. And now what I want to do is go to create polygon, circumscribed polygon. And then from the midpoint, I draw out a polygon like this. Again, six sided. The distance between flats now is seven millimeters. You want this to be quite tight. You can uh, force the nut in uh, and then it'll stay there due to friction. And then to constrain it fully, uh, we select one of these edges and give it a vertical constraint. We finish the sketch. We hit E for extrude. And then we extrude this inward by about five millimeters. What I'd like to do now is make a pocket for the head of the screw to fit into. To do this, I create another tangent plane, tangent to our mounting hub. And then the reference plane will be this plane that we made before. And for the angle, I will give it 180 degrees. So it ends up exactly at the opposite end of the mounting hub. Now we create a sketch onto this new plane. Um, hit P for project, and now I want to be a little bit more careful with what I select for projecting. So I'll select this line up here, and this little line down here. And the reason for that is that otherwise I get too many profiles that are available for extruding, and then I have to go through the effort of selecting the right ones. So hit OK, and then on the view cube I just hit left so I can get a better view again. Uh, X and L for construction line and draw that up like this then disable construction C for circle and I'll make this circle seven and a half millimeters thick um, because it's better if this screw fits quite loosely in here this doesn't need to be tight then hit E for extrude and then extrude the entire thing six millimeters down because the head of the screw is a little bit thicker than a nut hit enter and there we go. One of the difficulties in using this technique is that you must drill a hole through the shaft that is central on the shaft. It must not be off center because then the alignment won't work. And this is more difficult than it seems because as you try to press the drill bit into the steel, if you are off center ever so slightly, the drill bit will tend to wander off that way or the other way. 
And so getting this hole nice and centered is quite tricky indeed. For this, I have designed a special jig. And this jig consists of a lower and an upper part. And then on the bottom end here we have some nuts, which we will use later for clamping. And then we just add the steel shaft in this little channel. And then we put the top half on top. And then we can simply use some bolts to close up the jig. I've now closed up the jig, so we have the bolt heads on top with the nuts here on the bottom. And in the center now we have the shaft. And on the top end here, we have a small little hole which will guide the drill into the shaft. So we can now put this on the vise and close it up. And now we can start drilling. locate the hole with the drill bit and then push it down and now the jig will guide the drill bit centered on the shaft. So we now have a completed hole but there is now a little downside to the jig and that is that the chips that have been evacuated by the drill bit upwards into the jig have now enlarged this hole substantially and so now the top half of this jig is not really usable anymore. So here's a previous one that I used before and you can see this one is also not usable anymore. But now let's open up the jig and I'll show you the result. So I've removed the bolts and here we have our result. Uh, you can see that the hole is nice and centered on the shaft Though you should note that because I was slightly careless, the two holes now that are in this shaft are not exactly parallel. Nevertheless, both of these holes should work for mounting this gear. So let's give this a try. And I will grab my wrench my pliers rather put this in the right position and now I should be able to ram the screw in there grab the allen wrench and you can tighten this down You may have noticed over the past few shots that the screw of this gear is a little bit too long. But I would like to point out that the reason for this is because this screw has a piece of smooth shank. And it is this smooth shank that is in contact with the shaft. And this ensures a higher amount of strength and also provides a little bit less backlash. But what I want to do now is cut this screw off to the correct length. And for that there is another special trick. So I will make a mark where I want to cut the screw off and then I'll go cut it. So I've put the screw in the vise now and you can see the cut mark right here that I want to make. And on the other end of the cut mark I've inserted three nuts. And the reason for that will become apparent in just a second. So now I've cut off the last bit of the screw that I do not, do not want. And if I open up the vise and you look closely at the thread, you can see that it is slightly damaged. And the nuts now will act as a sort of um, die to reform the thread into what it needs to be. So this basically undamages the thread by unscrewing these nuts. And it gets easier for the third nut than it was for the first. I'm not completely happy yet with this screw because there's a slight sharp burr here that I want to remove. So I've put two nuts again on the threaded section and I can just take a file and get rid of that little nubble that I do not want. So that's smooth now. 
and then I can take the screw out of the vise again and again threading the nuts back over the piece of thread that I just damaged this doesn't work so I will need to use my pliers instead I misspoke of course I'm not going to use my pliers I'm going to use my vise Now this should fit nicely into our gear. So here we have our gear. Put the screw in like this. Take our wrench and we can turn it in. And now we have everything we want. The screw is no longer proud of the mounting hub. The head of the screw is also nicely inside the mounting hub. And here we see again that the smooth shank is in contact with the, with the shaft. And this again ensures the maximum amount of allowable torque and also reduces the amount of backlash. I hope you found that interesting and informative. In the next video we'll be taking a look at what parameters you need to select for your gears. And one example we'll cover is this Archimedes screw pump. Now in today's video we've designed this gear over here but the action of the pump is done with this shaft down here and what we want to do now is connect this shaft to this motor via two gears over here so we need to design the matching gear for this gear that we already have i'd like to thank you very much for watching don't forget to hit one of those buttons on your way out and have a great night